My name is Grace Chilande. I'm a fertilizer market specialist with the International Fertilizer Development Center, as well as a project coordinator for the AfricaFertilizer.org initiative. Um, historically, we've had uh, several data sets being collected by the different uh, government institutions uh, with information ranging from production, trade, consumption, as well as pricing information. But over the years, we've understood that this information has been disintegrated or isolated within these institutions, and there has been no one source for us to go and access information. So um, around 2012, when FAO, FAO came up uh, to set up technical working groups, at the same time, Africa Fertilizer collaborated with FAO to set up fertilizer technical working groups. And in setting up uh, this structure, we were trying to come up with a mechanism where we could bring together fertilizer data uh, from the different institutions, have one place where information about the fertilizer market would be available. So the AfricaFertilizer.org initiative was one such uh, tool that was created to be able to put together uh, fertilizer information, free to access information uh, for fertilizer stakeholders uh, within the country as well as internationally. Over the years, we've also come to understand that uh, we've had limited use of the fertilizer data that has been available. And this is owing to the fact that uh, information was not out there in terms of uh, how to access this information, where this information could be found, as well as not having a very well, uh, well structured or interactive uh, website. Um, to answer this question, there was the development of the DIFA, uh, DIFA program, which is visualizing insights in fertilizer on fertilizer in African agriculture. And in developing DFAR, the main aim was to use existing data that has been collated by AfricaFertilizer.org as well as other partner organizations to be able to better visualize this data, to be able to promote uh, accessibility and, and uh, information on the availability of this data, as well as getting the, the data to be used for decision making. So in the development of this dashboard and with the launch of the Kenya uh, Fertilizer Dashboard, uh, the intention is to have stakeholders actually start using this data, accessing historical information, as well as staying engaged, assisting in the population or updating of the fertilizer uh, data sets, ensuring that this information is being used by both the public the pri and the private sector in the country, as well as development agencies, all, all, all in a bid to allow for facilitation and decision making at different levels within the fertilizer sector. So our hope is with the development of the VIFAR dashboard, we will have a tool in place that will be self-sustaining, uh, seeing as we will have it hosted uh, with the AfricaFertilizer.org initiative, that will be a self-sustaining dashboard where fertilizer information will be readily available, ensuring that there's timely and relevant information on this platform. In the development of the VIFAR uh, dashboard, uh, it, it involved us uh, going back and understanding what data sets were available within the AfricaFertilizer.org initiative, as well as with uh, different uh, government bodies, Ministry of Agriculture to be more specific, uh, the Bureau of Statistics, as well as Customs. And in receiving this data, uh, we did identify several gaps. And these gaps were initially gaps that or could be easily addressed by having an exchange uh, in communication with the, with the owners of the data. But we also had, uh, to identify uh, key gaps that we needed to put in place structures that we would need to address this at a later stage. So in the development of the, of the dashboard, we will be launching, or we will be launching, yes, we will be launching uh, a dashboard that has existing uh, statistics, but also understanding that in the coming two years, we will be trying to address the gaps that we have in the data. And in addressing this, we will be uh, going step by step in terms of understanding uh, what are the data needs, uh, what's the data demand for this uh, specific data sets, as well as what are the opportunities for us to source the right information, source timely information, so that we create visualizations that are relevant to, the, to all stakeholders accessing this platform. So this is an exercise that we will uh, be engaging in in the coming year or two. And uh, we'll be working closely with the Kenya fertilizer stakeholders, uh, more specifically with the owners of the data, ensuring that at the end of the day, uh, the data belongs to the people who are collecting this data. And our work or our position is just to visualize and to avail this data in a more consolidated and attractive visualization uh, to allow for easy interpretation of the information. I'll give an example of the cost chain buildup uh, visualization. 
So this is a new uh, visualization uh, that has been consolidated by the Africa Fertilizer.org initiative. And this visualization is to uh, inform stakeholders on what are the actual cost components that go into the final price that farmers pay uh, at the farm level. And, and in understanding this, uh, we, we have created a visualization that will segment or will give a proper breakdown on what, uh, on what a stakeholder needs to pay, on what, uh, what are the cost implications once the product has been procured internationally, what are the cost implications once the product gets to the port, the cost implications in warehousing, as well as in transportation before it gets to the farm. And a possible use case for this is to inform policy. So government stakeholders, or we constantly hear this information where government keeps on saying we will reduce the price of fertilizer. But if you then refer to the cost chain buildup, you get an understanding of why you possibly could not reduce the cost of fertilizer. But if you were then to reduce the cost of fertilizer, at what point would a stakeholder, or what point would the government would, would possibly uh, start addressing the issue of reducing the cost? And in understanding that, then they would have a clear understanding of uh, cost components. This is a component that could be reduced in terms of percentages or taxes or fees levied on fertilizer imports. And in that way, ensure that the trickle down in, uh, in reducing the price for the smallholder farmers. So while understanding the government can provide subsidy, the end goal is to also avail fertilizers that are affordable for all, for all farmers in the country. So uh, this could be used by policymakers. The same information could be used by private sector to have an understanding of if you receive a quotation from an international uh, uh, international manufacturer, these are the cost implications of moving this product into the country. So for new players who are trying to join into uh, importation and distribution, they would have a clear understanding or a possible understanding of what the cost implications would be for bringing in 10 tons of a product to bring 10,000 metric tons of a product. And with this, then they would also have a proper understanding of what, is, what type of capital investment is required, uh, what banks they could engage with, knowing uh, if, they could, if they are accessible for letters of credit, just understanding that the serious cost, implication, uh, cost implications it has to move product from the international market down into the country. One of the challenges we are having in accessing fertilizer data is uh, when it comes to terms of uh, receiving timely information. So while we are fully aware that various uh, fertilizer institutions or stakeholders or public or private sector institutions have information, we struggle, uh, the main struggle or the main challenge we have is in accessing this information, is understanding that public sector information should be free to access information, but uh, the main challenge is there are no specific individuals who are assigned to share this information. And so interactions uh, stem from the point of having the right contacts, having uh, the right uh, communication channels with them to ensure that you're receiving this data. And so even in our development of the dashboard, when we were identifying gaps and understanding that uh, this is type of data that we need to receive from different institutions and, fully, and being fully aware that this information is available, uh, the main challenge then stems from the from the point of uh, approval to receive the data on time. And then once received, uh, once, once you've processed or cleaned the data, uh, the communication, the back and forth communication to ensure that what we're reporting is actually reflective of what happens in the market. So this is a challenge that we've not, we've seen beyond Kenya, where we're fully aware that data sets are available, but given that there have been no structures in fully uh, use, utilizing this data for a public good, uh, there's, there's a need for us to invest more time and resources to ensure that we are reporting the right information as well as ensuring that ownership goes back to the, the main data owners. 